So let's talk about the practicalities of what can women be doing to ensure that they have a healthier child. Sure. Absolutely. Thank you. So, you know, obviously I'm but one person. I have a few nurse practitioners here as well, but we obviously recognize that we ourselves can't change the world, but we have a plan to do so um, through an extended network. The, the preconception to infancy movement, the P2I, we actually did our first physicians and the practitioners training um, in in Portland back in April where there were over a hundred practitioners to learn about our protocols. The goal here is that we're going to set over to have a million babies in a database over the course of the next five years or so so that we could really study all of this stuff in an appropriate way um, but at a real high-end CDC level database that everybody will be putting their information into. Um, in terms of people physically seeing us, you know, we it, we do need to see a person face to face for the first time in order to do a, a, a direct be a kind of a, primary care or providing care for them, but that we can do follow up by Skypes with them. But also if a physician or a naturopathic physician, nurse practitioner refers a patient to us, we can then actually see a patient via Skype um, in order as a, as a consultant to that, to that practitioner and then we can ask the, that practitioner to order the lab tests and, and treatments and those types of things if somebody needs a prescription. But really, what we're doing is we're looking at, as I said, a lot of the same biomedical issues. So we're looking for vitamin D deficiencies, looking at zinc deficiencies and the ratio to copper. We're looking at um, ferritin levels to make sure that they have adequate um, iron, making sure that they have really robust, good thyroid hormone levels. If they have a lot of fatigue and stress, we're looking at their cortisol levels. And, you know, a lot of what we're doing, though, we're taking a, a – it's certainly a little bit more progressive approach in terms of some of the reference ranges that we're using. We, we don't accept bottom of the barrel but still within range as, um, as acceptable. We're really looking more for middle range values. So, you know, if you look at a vitamin D level, for instance, the laboratory will say – the normal value is 32 to 100. Well, we don't want to see somebody at 33. We want to see them at 50, 60, 70, but we're not necessarily needing to push them to 100 either. So it's kind of part of it is also knowing what the ideal reference ranges are because if you think about it, most reference ranges in our country are based upon average relatively unhealthy people who aren't taking any supplements and things. So if you're just looking at what the average score is for uh, across all Americans, that of course doesn't necessarily mean that that's the optimal level that you want to obtain either. So we go through these things very similar to we do our biomedical autism evaluations. If a woman's been on a lot of antibiotics, I'm certainly contemplating whether they could have candida. That's something that I would potentially want to treat preconception, but not necessarily giving them the pharmacological agent during the pregnancy. So and that's why we'd like to catch them as early as we possibly can. And, and so we need to say that it's, this is not a one-size-fits-all protocol, um, that in fact you're looking at each individual and figuring out exactly what they need. There are, you're seeing a lot of similarities in different people, but it really needs to be specific onto one person, correct? Absolutely. And, you know, that's true even from the get-go. You know, one of the things that we're very, very interested in is the whole concept of the MTHFR, the methylation of pathways with, uh, with folate and B12 and making sure that we know, we know, for instance, that women who have double MTHFR mutations are significantly increased risk of having a miscarriage. And so a lot of, you know, that's part of our history that we're taking. And, if, and we're checking people's MTHFRs. And from the get-go, we would want them to be on methylfolate um, as an activated folate and, and taking methylfolate will be 12. Um, again, so we're, but we're looking at these things very early on. You know, even when a woman first gets pregnant, if a woman's had a lot of miscarriages, maybe they have low progesterone levels, and so we're going to check them a few days into their right after conception, and if it's not there, we're going to be aggressively giving them progesterone. So it's very once, uh, once um, one individual at a time type of approach, but it's just like we've seen with children with autism, there are certainly patterns, you know, yes. that, you know, obviously the majority of our patients do have low vitamin D levels. A lot of them have low zinc levels. So again, it's a lot of the similarities, but of course, if someone has a great vitamin D level, we're not putting them on vitamin D. If right. they got a great lead level, we're not putting them on lead, uh, lead excuse me, on zinc. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. We're going to hold off on giving, the, on giving lead to people. Yeah, we're not, we're not going to do that. Yeah, but, we'll pass. Uh, it's early. It's okay. Uh, and so uh, I would think that the best thing that somebody could do is ha hop on a plane and get down to Tampa to see you um, and they can make an appointment for you by going to your website which is holisticfamilycare.com but you mentioned that you did a training for a hundred other physicians is there a way that we can find a list of who those physicians are to know who we can yeah, go to in our area? 
Yeah, that list is actually being formalized right now. Um, I'm, 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 it's something that, that will come out from the forum. We're hoping that um, it'll be formally available by the end of the summer, but that'll be up to them. And by the way, Holistic in Our Life is spelled with a W-W-H-O-L for people who are trying to find us. Thank and you. as I said, not everybody has to hop on a plane to get here because if their local practitioner just writes out a referral to us and they say that they're willing to re refer the patient to us, we're able to see them without having to see them face-to-face -face because they have another practitioner who is take, who is their the person taking care of them and then we're just serving as a consultant. So we can do that and then be in communication with their local um, practitioners and, and coordinate care with them too. So they don't, not everybody has to come in in order for them to see us. Okay. And I want to say just for the record that um, as a board member of Autism Care and Treatment today, um, which David Humphrey is also a board member of, this, the question of, of people getting to see you came up at a board meeting recently and there was a discussion about the fact that people can apply for a grant to be able to come and see you in Florida, that that is something that ACT Today will entertain grant proposals for somebody to be able to do that because it is so important. So right. um, if somebody is saying, wow, well, I'd really like to go see Dr. Berger to have that first visit, but it's cost prohibitive for you, um, just know that you can apply for a grant from ACT Today um, to defray the cost of, of being able to get there and do that. I'm not sure if it covers airfare or just the visit, but you can apply for a grant and, and get further information about that. But um, so again, the website to go though, to find out more and to look at your website is holistic, as you mentioned with a W, holisticfamilycare.com. And where is the website that they can go to to uh, access the forum? I believe it's forum P2I, if I'm not, it's, it's um, forum P two I dot com or P two I forum. You know, I should probably we'll, know the we'll internet. Check that it, out. It, it's forum P two I dot com. The, the wonders of the internet. I just pulled it up. Forum P two I dot com. Okay.